I don't know about you, but I've always wished that there was a safe place to access psychedelics here in Vancouver, but I've never quite found the right spot. Oh my God, it's a mushroom dispensary. The Coca Leaf Cafe, what is that? Let's go find out. Welcome everyone, we're here at the Coca Leaf Cafe and we are here with David Malmo Levine. Can you tell us a little bit about what people can expect to find here at the Coca Leaf Cafe? Oh yeah, uh, we got all the soft drugs that all, all the cool kids do. Uh, can I show you their showcase here? Absolutely. All right, let's go over here because this is the most impressive aspect. Uh, just seeing all these awesome drugs in one place. We have mushroom chocolates, mushroom gummies, uh, mushroom rice crispy bars. Uh, we got dried mushrooms, we got mushroom tincture, uh, we got mushroom capsules. Uh, we also have LSD in both uh, microdose gummy and tab form. We have dimethyltryptamine or DMT in freebase and vape pens. Uh, we have herbal cigarettes if you don't want to smoke weed or tobacco. We've got other things to smoke here, we've got jewelry. We've got a fine selection of books and blotter art. Uh, we have these free user guides so if you just want to learn more about drugs, you can come in here and take one of each and uh, fill your brain with knowledge. In wise hands, poison is medicine, and in foolish hands, medicine is poison. Casanova said that in the 1790s, and he was still ahead of the curve today. Uh, over here we have Kratom Automatic Dispenser. Kratom is like a substitute for harder drugs like meth and opiates. And um, it's a leaf that comes from Southeast Asia that is dried ground up and people mix it into drinks and, and the red strains are relaxing the white strains are stimulating and the green strains have a bit of both going on and so we sell a lot of that in this uh, neighborhood here we have these beautiful peyote plants for sale and we also have dried peyote for sale uh, we also have this coca leaf cafe where you can get uh, coca tea drinks uh, like a coca chino which is a coca tea the milk or milk substitute and a syrup pump I like oat milk and a shot of caramel, mm, chef kiss. We also have shooters, which are just kind of microdoses of different hallucinogens. Now a microdose isn't meant to make you trip balls, it's meant to change your mood, you know, make you walk around with a smile on your face all day long. So we have four options for that. We have a microdose of LSD, of psilocetin, which is a synthetic mushroom. We have nootropic stack, which is a combination of mushroom tincture, a little bit of niacin and lion's mane. I think the niacin makes it more bioavailable than the lion's mane is kind of a neuroprotectant or a brain damage fixer. And you can get in, in six different dose levels. All of these are kind of, you know, sub-threshold, but uh, you can have a mini microdose, the tiniest amount. Or you can have a micro-double which is nine bucks and, and you should start feeling a little sparkly, a little wavy. And then you have coca as well, Well, right? coca. Coca is the most amazing plant. I think, you know, after cannabis, it's like the number two medicine on planet Earth. Highest source of calcium in the plant kingdom, loaded with vitamins and protein, good for tummy troubles, altitude sickness, appetite suppression, gives you energy all day long. Um, doesn't have the headache withdrawal or the jitters that caffeine does. So it's a superior stimulant to coffee and tea. Um, I think it should be everywhere on every corner, just like coffee and tea. Interesting, thank you so much. Yeah. So I'm gonna uh, show you Dana Larson now. Okay. He's the owner of this cafe. And he, he, uh, he's been active in the drug peace community longer than I have. All right, everyone, we are here in the Central Intelligence headquarters of the Coca Leaf Cafe. I'm here speaking with. I'm Dana Larson. And Dan Larson, do you mind just sharing a little bit about yourself and what your background is? Yeah, well, I've been involved in cannabis and drug policy reform for pretty much all of my adult life, which is like over 30 years now. Uh, over the years, I was editor of Cannabis Culture magazine. I founded the Vancouver Dispensary Society. We run the Medicinal Cannabis Dispensary, one of the very few old school legacy dispensaries still out there. Uh, but these days, I'm really focused on the Medicinal Mushroom Dispensary, the Coca Leaf Cafe, and Get Your Drugs Tested, uh, all important projects that I think are continuing to help uh, push this movement forward. Yeah, it's incredible. Thanks so much for the work that you're doing. Would you mind sharing a little bit about what the 
status is in Vancouver. Because for people that aren't in Vancouver, or even a lot of people in Vancouver, they might be a little surprised to see places like the Coca Leaf Cafe and numerous other, almost like 10 or I want to say a dozen now, mushroom dispensaries in Vancouver. Can you share a little bit about like what is allowing that to happen and like what sort of, um, like what what is it about Vancouver that is allows us to have something like this? Well, Vancouver and Canada really, I think, right now is at a point with psychedelics, especially mushrooms, but I think psychedelics in general. A uh, very similar place where we are, were in like the mid-1990s when it came to cannabis. You know, at that time, we'd had a few court decisions acknowledging the medicinal benefits of cannabis. Some patients had legal access but didn't really have a place to buy it, and the government was starting to grow cannabis but having troubles doing that. We were seeing the first dispensaries opening up. Uh, the very first ones were in Vancouver and Victoria, but soon we saw Toronto and other cities opening dispensaries as well. And so I think we're seeing the same things now with, with mushrooms, where Vancouver has our own police force, and while I certainly have some issues with the Vancouver police, uh, you know, when it comes to dispensaries and drug policy and that, they're fairly enlightened compared to other police forces sometimes. And I think that's also because you know, when we had a lot of cannabis dispensaries operating in Vancouver, people would say to the police, why aren't you shutting all these places down and raiding them? And they'd say, look, it costs us about $30,000 to do a raid on a dispensary and put, bring charges forward. Usually the charges don't go forward, prosecutors drop them. If they go to trial, the penalties are very minimal. They reopen the same day. We can't, they can't withstand the tide. And, uh, and so they decided not to enforce them, unless there's like other issues or a lot of community complaints or some other things going on. And so it's the same thing now with, with mushroom dispensaries. And we're one of the very first ones here. And certainly, there's probably over a dozen now in Vancouver in various degrees of what they sell, you know. Uh, I think we're the only place that also sells uh, DMT vape pens and LSD tabs and liquid LSD. I know we're the only place selling coca leaf, uh, kratom. So, you know, we're about more than just mushrooms, although certainly mushrooms here are the core of our business in terms of sale volume. Uh, but I hope that we see the same thing happen with cannabis, that we end up with hundreds of shops all across the country. Not me, but like our movement have hundreds of shops all across the country and some maybe will get raided, but we can, you know, we over, the, the, the slogan was overgrow the government when it came to cannabis. Cannabis. Just we gotta have massive disobedience at a level where the police and the courts uh, just can't keep up. And I want to do the same thing now with psychedelics, and we're starting to see that happen. And ultimately, that's gonna how we're gonna end the whole the whole war on drugs. So I got a lot of work to do on cannabis, and uh, we're gonna have a lot of work to do in the whole drug war for quite a long time. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate all of that. Thank you.